Okay, hello everybody. How's it going? Welcome to this week's Crypto Mastery class. This is Brett. And so if you're watching this live or on the recording, we are uploading these to our YouTube channel. And so we are going to start with the news and dive into some markets. And um, you can probably make it pretty quick this week. Uh, however, uh, not a huge amount of news, but uh, just to dive in, we've got uh, Sam here is back in the news. But how's everyone doing today, first of all? We've got Lisa, Pirate J, Alex, Tori, David, Rick, welcome. Uh, Rick, look forward to talking later today. And uh, yeah, so any questions as usual, just ask those in the chat. And uh, let me do this here. And um, let's see that uh, menu bar has disappeared again on me. So, all right, well, we'll dive into a look at the chat in a minute here. So Sam, our good friend um, from FTX, uh, being facetious, of course, uh, is being accused of Chinese bribe. Well, he's uh, quite the figurehead there. And so I haven't had time to unpack this. We'll just skim through it. Markets are looking weak here, as I've been saying for a couple of days. And let's see, Sam uh, has been accused of bribe. No, no surprise there. Here in the U.S., we call it the donations to the political parties and uh, instead of a bribe, but it's kind of the same thing. That he basically over here did what Goldman did back in 2008 financial crisis, where they gave a lot of money to political parties. Uh, somebody's saying my mic has shifted. And... Um, Look at that. Hang on. Sorry about that. All right. Let's see. Now it should be better now. Can you guys hear me now? Not why. Not sure why that happened, guys. Uh, it sometimes these technologies will do that. And good. Okay, thanks. I'm glad I pulled up the chat. Uh, the um, <clears throat> the menu bar keeps disappearing, Myrene. If you could look into that, I thought we had that to stay on, but it disappears, and that's why I couldn't find the chat right away. But um, anyway, I'll move that up high here, and hopefully it doesn't keep disappearing. All right. Um, that, to keep going, sorry about that, guys. You don't want to hear about this. The um, so And we won't spend too much time on Sam or the news. You know, I always say, show me the charts i'll tell you the news but um this is just more fud that um sam is being accused of uh here's the tldr he faces more than 100 years in prison if convicted and um that's pretty scary i i you know that's um good lesson not to do what he did but um you know, still some speculation whether he was the fall guy on all this, but clearly he was given too much free reign. And, you know, I, I've had businesses for a long time, and I've had people in Bezel that were close to me, CFOs, managers, and it's kind of a sad revelation that if you make it easy for people to steal, they often will. And uh, present company excluded, I'm sure, but um, the temptation can be too much. So just to put on our tin hats for a little bit, you know, certainly nobody wanted to see all of this happen, but certainly somebody should have been in better oversight and, and control of all this. And so he was, um, at, you know, he was backed by certain people like Digital Currency Group and um, and people that uh, have all been suffer suffered from the collapse. So, you know, I don't think it's worth diving into. We may never know or we may one day know uh, when it all comes out. I think if Sam gets convicted for a long, long time, he might just say, all right, I have nothing to lose. Here's what really happened. But at any rate, uh, four new criminal charges accusing him of conspiring to make illegal political donations and commit bank fraud. And uh, has already pleaded not guilty to defrauding customers and investors. Interesting. And so 12 criminal charges, you know, um, what is what's happening in the markets? Is anything really reacting to that so we'll see in a minute i've got some other news pulled up 
today, that is March 28th, Bitcoin in a free fall as regulators turn their attention to Binance. Yeah, so this is the one thing that is most newsworthy. This is yesterday's news breaking. Binance and CZ sued by the CFTC over U.S. regulatory violations. You know, um, CFTC joining the party, not the SEC, which has been kind of acting as the regulatory body and filing lawsuits against crypto exchanges, rather uh, rather the coins for pretending to be securities. Uh, the CFTC, you know, is also getting involved. So we just don't know yet who's going to be the regulatory body. And some have speculated that we may have ultimately and may see a new regulatory body entirely for crypto. But uh, that would be a while down the road. So the, um, you know, so now they're going after. There's certainly, a, there's there's a war on crypto and we know that and empirically just uh, not out full out war, but essentially the big banks are not going to relinquish the rails of the financial institutions, uh, global institutions, and all of that willingly. Well, why would they? So now they're going after, you know, they're going after staking. Uh, Coinbase is publicly basically stating that they're going, they're willing to sue uh, the SEC. And um, interestingly, let me see if I still have that up. I think I do have another screen. I wanted to show this to you because for those of you that um, run this last week, the uh, there was a news article that we were, when we were looking for the unusual uh, option volume, yeah, here it is. <clears throat> Pardon me, let me move this over. The uh, trying to bring this in. My computer's running a little slow here today, you guys. I'm sorry about that. All right, I'm trying to add it to the tab. But this was a Twitter article, basically. This was from a week ago saying that Coinbase CEO reportedly selling millions in Coinbase shares and uh, be and right before they received a Wells notice from the SEC. And uh, that software that we were sharing with everybody, the uh, Insider Spy Pro, showed that. And um, I'm not here to promote that here today, but it was very interesting when I pulled that up in uh, the uh, scanner that uh, it showed that Brian Anderson and the other executives at Coinbase have been selling most, if not all, of their shares uh, starting in heavily in December. So... I'd like to I'd like to know why that is. That you know, insiders can sell their shares. They just have to file. And these are things that came up on public filings. And if I can find this uh, screenshot, I might have to go back a bit. But I, I think it's important to understand and have your own working thesis on what's really happening here. And how did they know? Because you know, that uh doesn't give us a lot of confidence in you know, these surprise filings. Let me just pull it up here. I do. I think I have it. Uh, that is not it. Forgive me, guys. We'll, we'll, we'll keep going on this. I just thought it might be useful to see that rather than just hearing me say this, that um, all of this was happening here. Let me see if it's this one. I know it's off screen and it's pulling up some other screenshots that um, uh, at any rate. So what do you guys think? Here it is. Sorry, I wanted to make sure we 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 saw this, and I'm just not making things up. So here we go. Uh, disregard all the rest of the stuff here. Let me just pull it out of the way. This is a screenshot uh, of the uh, software that um, I don't have running, but quick screenshot there showing that um, trying to protect these other people in the images. Here, Brian Anderson and uh, selling massive shares on Coinbase, and so. He currently has, he's sold all of his shares according to this, and he's been dumping lots of shares along with the CFO here, Brian Armstrong. We have Alicia J. Haas, General Counsel, General Counsel Paul Gruel, and uh, large quantities of these. And the Brian Anderson up to March 21st sold 2.2 million of his shares. And on March 15th, a week before that, roughly 1.7 million of his shares. So he's he's kind of, he according to this, he now owns zero shares of Coinbase, all leading up to the Wells notice. That's my point. Uh, sorry, I should have had that pulled up. But um, at any rate, the point is, there's a war on crypto and uh, I'm not going to put on tin hat and say flat out war, but look, the follow the money. I think we've, I think I've made my point. People 
the big banks are not going to easily relinquish this. But why would Coinbase give up so easily? And there may be more to the story, certainly, but certainly worth noting. So back to the story. Binance CZ sued by the FT CFTC, rather, uh, filed suit for trading violations. Um, kind of, you know, not a huge surprise. That's why they created Binance US, because they had uh, a US version after the SEC and they basically said US investors can't invest with uh, the regular Binance. That's still the case. And um, because they basically snubbed and put their nose up, uh, that's the friendly version. They, you know, basically middle fingered up. The SEC said, you know, screw you, we're not going to follow the regulations. So they sort of caved, opened Binance US, but now the larger company is being investigated by the CFTC. So they're ganging up. Uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. In the end, it's like Victor Hugo said, you cannot stop an idea whose time has come. So we're still in the Wild West here. All right. Uh, let's see. Also, Binance has been under investigation by the IRS. Federal prosecutors have examined the exchange's adherence to money, money laundering rules. And... Uh, and here, I guess. And meanwhile, the SEC has also been investigating whether Binance allowed U.S. traders to access unregistered securities. So not exactly a welcome wagon for crypto, is it? All right. Um, we won't dive too far into this. Here's the civil action and um, something you don't want to see that can ruin your day. All right. Uh, what else? So, so we've got Sam. We've got that. I think we can dive into the charts and uh go from there so why don't we see what's happening here and i'm going to jump over here to my main uh, trading list here we'll look at the indicators showing us i was looking at some of the ai coins but bitcoin in general we'll look at the daily here we dive into this in more detail in the active trader tomorrow uh, if you're watching this or the recording if you'd like to see more of this and more in depth you can find out more at moonstream.io m3 that's M-O-O-N-S-T-R-E-A-M dot I-O slash M3. So uh, what are we seeing here on the Bitcoin chart? The uh, As I've been saying, it's sort of topping out. Uh, we have our TSI breaking down above the 80. So our indicators are telling us that we will head lower here. This is our signal, our confirming signal. And in terms of an early reversal indicator, we did have one about a week ago, right at the top here. And so uh, this, uh, as our flagship indicator, of course, we have that. I'll turn on the uh, radar just to see what that is showing here. We've got, have that down in the lower corner. So on the bullish side, we have this bounce here, early reversal indicator back here on March 12th. Had a nice little rally in there. So excellent signal. So it went up around 40%. These swing trading moves are excellent a way to make money in up or down markets. I uh, had another one back in here, as we can see. So it's always good to be sharpening the saw and reconfirming these indicators work. And of course, the confirmation on these, just a little bit of review here, you guys. The confirmation, just turning off our other two flagship indicators, we get an ERI. The confirmation is the TSI going green. And then if your double confirmation is above the 20 line, the negating quality here, we had an early reversal indicator, but the TSI was red and heading lower. So this was a false signal. We're currently in works talking and working with a programmer to create a super indicator out of our four that would sort of eliminate this. So it would only show these confirmed indicators. And so for now though, and I do recommend, and as, as a matter of practice, and getting good at recognizing the individual signals and not have a one size fits all that you blindly put your faith in. Because these there are many factors involved in these markets, as we know. So that being said, early a reversal here on the bearish side. We also had a bearish engulfing candle here. And we even turn on our candlestick scanner and see did that uh, show. And um, it looks like, let's see, it it didn't, maybe this didn't quite qualify. It's showing this is a bullish engulfing and this is a bullish engulfing. So this indicates indecision up in this area. I'll just turn that off for a minute. For a minute. But, um, and uh, if you uh, are seeing these and would like to find out more about these indicators, just go to cryptomastery.online. Okay, enough of that. So what do we see here? We had the ERI, the bearish up top there. 
confirming now on the TSI rolling down below 80. So again, this is indicated indicative or would indicate we're going to see a full cycle here. Once it breaks that 80 line or above the 20, more often than not, it completes the cycle as we saw here and here and here. That's why this is such a powerful oscillator and especially in conjunction with the ERI. So what does that mean? Where would I expect this to go? I think the easiest answer here is if we were to put a Fibonacci on that and as a target, obviously we don't know the future, but uh, I would say that we probably pulled it back down into this slightly rising trend channel. And look at that, it, it exactly matches this uh, trend channel here and the Fibonacci golden pocket. So I think coming down to 23,000 on Bitcoin is certainly uh, doable and if not likely. So that's the um, TLDR of today's class. So to confirm that as well, let's look at this. We also have our signal line going green to red. So our mantra is ERI, TSI, signal, and bell. The bell would be on the bullish side. Since we are bearish, then uh, we this is a bit of a conundrum, though. We had a new bell forming three days ago, but uh, price is going down. So this is one of those rare times that the bell indicator has failed which is is bearish, right? And uh, typically, just for a point of context and nuance, typically the strongest series are after a cycle reset. Those of you on our options vertical returns are familiar with that term. Cycle reset is after this midline goes from red until green. A cycle, we all know the Michael, uh, markets are constantly, they're cyclical, they're constantly cycling. It's a bit of word salad there. But uh, so when it's coming down and the midline is red, and then we get a fresh key and a bell, those are the opportunities they really want to pay attention to. They're more likely to see that momentum at least get to one completion with this bag of money signal there. That's our take profit signal. And even two. Okay, when you get into cycles two or past two and into three and four, they're less likely to fully complete. There's a nuance for you guys. Right, so red line, we had the key here, didn't get the bell. The key is a warning sign. Trend may be reversing, but we wait for the bell. Didn't happen here. Red line still red. I like to see this at least green. So then we had the key after this cycle reset, a key and a bell midline green or the moving average midline is i call it the midline it's sort of the baseline whatever you want to call it but from there and then we had uh all the way through here take profit one take profit two and then we would wait key in a bell we'd re-enter a little bit higher and then again completed that cycle that would have been an excellent trade and then the third cycle the key in the bell pushed higher a bit but again they kind of they do run out of steam Here's where it went for it did fail. Red line cycle reset key in a bell. That's why you always want to use stop losses. And wherever you know you want to set those, I would have set that here as this was sort of the top of that swing cycle. A break below that line would have been indicating indicating this is going lower. And but we also had the TSI kind of rolling over as well. So it, it's important to follow these nuances here. My point of all this is here we've had another cycle reset, then a fresh key and a bell went right up to the completion on the bag of money here, and then a key and a bell, but we're seeing that fail. Okay, so this bearish, so that contributes to the bearish side. Now, if you want to play the downside, and some of you know I'm trading some 3S shorts on Phantom Coin, and so if Bitcoin goes lower and breaks down from here, likely everything follows including the altcoins uh, and um so now if you were just looking at the chart here by the way you might say well this is bullish to me you might say i like the way this looks it's forming a higher support you know broke above resistance forming support in there and uh that would be valid somewhat valid but because i trust my indicators you know even if we get a little bit of a bounce here I'm still going to be looking for this lower high because my indicators are telling us that we go lower, especially right now. 
This confirms the bearish ERI from days ago. Now, has it happened that this bounces out of this region? Sure. But I would say 80 to 90% that um, it continues. Maybe that's a bit high. When in doubt, zoom out. I'm not here to predict the future. So let's look. Here's another factor. And again, this is a good class for some nuances. And, um, you know, I look at these lowering highs down like this. And then this did break down like that. But also, you know, we see a few of these that came out and, and then push back up higher. And so it's sometimes good to draw these kind of trend lines. Oh, we don't have one here. But uh, I also... So it, it, probably we see at least some more downside. You know, it's fair to also draw these lines in the sand. They're not exactly accurate, but the uh, balance points here and here and even here you know, would indicate we have at least a little more downside. So we'll wait and see. What's the next clue we can look for? Let's zoom out to the weekly. And uh, so here's another bearish sign, or at least a sign to get out of the market, even if you think it might push higher. The signals are telling us down here, the trend indicator on the weekly, this is a time to take profit and wait for a new key and a bell on the weekly basis. So zooming out a bit, when the last time that happened, right down here, had you exited, let me zoom in on this. Uh, this was an unusual one. So a bell was here, it dropped a bit, it still stayed in the number sequence. As long as these numbers are printing though, that's okay. The midline, even though while it went red, was still printing new numbers. And then here was the take profit and new key and a bell. It did push higher to this one here. But again, the more times these cycles continue, the less likely they are to, you know, to to keep on going, especially on the longer time frames, unless and until we're in a new bull trend, and it's not clear that we are. So it's also really helpful to understand the macro cycles. So um, we can dive into that a little bit, but again, what I would be waiting for here is a new key, and a new weekly bell, ideally. And my thesis has been for a while now that we push up into this range, which we did right in the 28,000, 29,000, fill that CME gap, and then we see a short-term pullback, and then we do push higher. That's what I think. I think we see a short-term multi-week pullback, giving us an excellent buying opportunity. Those of you watching the recording, this is March 28th, 2023. You can see if I was right, pulling back in this range and then pushing higher on to breaking that 30,000 level. And then on from past 30,000, it's a quick push up to 48K to 52K. That would be the golden pocket from the market cycle high. We can look at that in a minute. But at any rate, I think this week, if not sooner than later, would be a time to be getting out, taking your profits. If you have some, potentially going short via the 3S short instruments, uh, or if you trade margin, that is... Um, that's up to you. But just from the chart here, looking at it, a bearish doji here, it's always good to look at these higher, higher time frames. This doji here indicates indecision and generally at market tops. Okay, we saw a nice hammer down here on the weekly basis preceding this huge move up here, by the way. Again, oh, it's good to, when in doubt, zoom out. So we should take a look at the monthly chart also, if everyone sees that. Um, let's uh, go ahead and do that here, looking at a monthly chart of Bitcoin. And so this is sort of my chart. We'll unpack more tomorrow in the active trader class, these different scenarios that I've been drawing and had on here for a while. From here, it does look like we could push higher on the monthly basis to that 30,000. But I think this, this candle's a bit tired. It's run out, run out of steam a bit. And, um, so on a monthly basis, these scenarios may still play out. It could push higher and go up, or it may still sell off here. And, and then, then we continue down and retest some recent lows before pushing higher. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Again, we'll dive into that more detail here tomorrow on the Active Trader class. So let's see. This is on a weekly basis. There's quite a lot to unpack here. I won't dive too much into that in today's class. Basically, though, as I've had on here, we'd run out of steam right in this range, and then we'd see a pullback here. This would be a buy zone. 
and the bit to the Bitcoin golden pocket around 48k 52k. That's what I think is likely. So pulling back and then we push higher. So uh, we can look at some other coins here and uh, even pull up the uh, movers. And again, this focus of this class is really zero in on the crypto mastery indicators here on the uh, weekly two on our trend strength indicator, bit overbought up in this range, you know, pushed a bit higher here. Uh, now, this is interesting too. We had a bearish ERI here. And the reason that you wouldn't have acted on it following our rule set, it wasn't confirmed. The TSI did not break down below 80. Great example of when to when the indicators don't align. These two, the ERI and the TSI together are excellent. You Especially when you use the 80-20 rule. Not to be repetitive, but uh, repetition is the mother of all learning. Make sure that you're getting this, guys. Because here, you might be tempted to have said ERI is bearish. This is going red and even taking a small position. That would have been fair. But once it reversed, had your stop loss and been out, I would have doubled down when that broke 20 on a weekly basis. Remember, so today is Tuesday and, uh, the, and a lot can change in four or five days. So that's why Sunday's closing candle is very important for confirming things like this. If you have, you know, if you have these signals, you're trying to align. And uh, being careful not to uh, reverse engineer and say, well, would have, should have, could have, or we would have done this, should have done that. We're not going to do that. So you know, it's important that you're aware of your confirmation biases. Uh, humans do that and say, well, Mike, surely I wasn't wrong before. So clearly this signal supports my earlier analysis. You need to let ego fall by the wayside and admit when you're wrong. But this is this is what I look for. So. Again, um, bearish on um, the weekly basis here, bearish candle here. This circle, uh, I won't uh, say anything more about. Take profits on the bag of money. So there's our signs to get out. And if you were in that, I would be taking profits. Not financial advice, educational purposes only, but you get the idea. Okay. Anything else you want to look at? Again, we'll unpack this a bit more in tomorrow's class. Uh, just skimming around a bit, we do have XRP. Uh, trying to push higher there and um let's see well i want to jump back to a daily and we'll just kind of go through let's see how did that get onto a uh okay i understand yeah we jumped to a weekly but this is my daily chart so with that uh, why don't we take a look at some uh, various coins we can look at ethereum and look at that just following my predictions there from a week or so ago i've moved this i think they moved this once or twice but I haven't touched it in days. So sure enough, ETH pushed up here to this 1800 range is pulling back into my buy triangle. And so ETH is one I'd want to watch for. And here it's riding above the 21 day moving average. So what would you guys do? I have on here buy ETH 50% in my IRA for a HODL or a huddle. <clears throat> and I may do that. I want to give it a few more days. I, I like it in this range. And then I would double down though on the lower edge of this because it is in an ascending trial he triangle here on Ethereum. Then uh, what else can we see here? Well, let's turn on our uh, ERI. Okay, bear double bearish ERI signal that that would be rolling over. The radar is giving us mixed signals. So bullish on the four hour weekly monthly kind of bearish on the daily. So how do you digest that? Well, the four hour we can sort of dismiss for now because these are not in alignment. The daily bearish weekly bullish supports what I just said a minute ago. I think we pull back in for a few days this week and then resume the uptrend on the weekly basis. So that's how you use the radar to confirm your analysis. And uh, sure enough, so up back in here, we had the uh, TSI, double bearish TSI here, and confirming with it, the, I'm sorry, I misspoke, the double ERI, bearish early reversal indicator, hence the name, early reversal indicator. We had it back here, which confirmed with the TSI here, signal and bell. So that was a great signal. You guys see that? If you're not paying attention, just zero in on this real quick. Ideal setups. So Ethereum, we'll come back to the indicators here on a up on an uptrend here on this trend line. You know, by this point, this lower trend line, ascending trend line was significant. So you should have drawn that 
And then we had a top again, ascending triangle. So when we came down and, and pushed below that, now, right about here, you might have said, hey, I'm out. This thing's going lower, but that's why you wait for the daily close because it pushed back up, found support on this trend line, pushed up here again, ERI signaled there, and then the trend strength indicator confirmed here with a push above 20. So that's if you're using the trader success checklist, which we'll, uh, I'll pull that up. I've got a new version to show you guys. And uh, then... The what happened also is the signal line went green. So again, our mantra is ERI TSI signal and bell. So here was confirmation number three, and then we had a fresh key and a bell. So zooming out on that, I want to make sure that everybody understands why these indicators are so powerful. So they're the key, the bell, and then it pushed up to this area here and uh, to take profit. So basically, that was a great little trade. And uh, then we had the con counter trend, the bearish ERIs. So the TSI started going red. So that was an early sign. And now we're a couple of days ago, we saw that breaking through. So there was that confirmation on the TSI. And we're seeing the T uh, signal line going red as well. Okay, we don't watch the bell on the uh, the bearish side. Everyone got that? So again, what I would be watching for is a bit more of a pullback. And they'll be looking for buy zones in this range. And um, you know, I might even kind of start legging into... Hmm. Ordinarily, I might say, I, I like the support on this 21 day. Let me turn on our 50 day EMA and just see where that is. Yeah, so I think this could have some room to fall. If I didn't think Bitcoin was heading lower and I think we have more downside, I would probably start lagging into ETH here personally. But I'm going to wait. I'm going to give this a few days and see. I think we've got more downside. And uh, certainly this news, this is where you start to, as an experienced trader, now I'm saying, all right, normally I would do this just based on the charts, but what's going on in the world? What's going on in the news? Well, markets sold off yesterday, this big green red candle here, another bearish engulfing candle. Now, for some reason, uh, it's only showing me bullish engulfing candles. So let me see if I have those turned off. I might have them turned off in here. All right, uh, bearish engulfing should be, I don't know why that's not turning on. Not sure why these are pink. Sometimes the defaults, you can change these, by the way. And, and some of these, the bearish kicker, I'm going to turn off. Some of these, I uh, don't watch those. You have a lot of control on these. So bullish engulfing, for sure, we want. Bearish engulfing, we want. The Haramis, I don't really watch too much. Uh, the inverted hammer. Dark cloud cover, those are good. But um, the main ones I'm watching here, dojis, of course. Evening star, not so much, but hammers, yeah. Okay, uh, but mostly the engulfing candles. In fact, the hammer means I'll just take off. All right, so, so what are we looking at here? We have some stuff, doji, inverted hammer, hammer. But really, I wanted the bearish engulfing candle. Not sure why that's not showing up. Over here, it, it did. So, okay, well, we won't go into the weeds with that. At any rate, um, point being, uh, you guys, what was I looking for here? I guess this wasn't quite a bearish engulfing. It wasn't quite engulfing. That's why it didn't fire. Uh, whereas these two were bullish. So I will take our ERI in place of or overriding an engulfing candle if these things line up. Hopefully, generally, uh, if they're all in alignment, a bearish engulfing with our ERI and the TSI, even better. Okay, so so basically, that's Ethereum. I'd be waiting for a pullback and then a push higher. Let's see. In terms of some other coins, um, you know, we have the total market cap still holding on over a trillion dollars, which is good. I have got a bunch of lines on here for our other class as a possible pullback. If we see the, the overall total market cap come back down to this trend channel, then I'll be looking for the next bullish engulfing candle. I'm sorry, the next ERITSI. Sometimes I'm looking at something and saying, <laughs> so, and this is on the last example where we had a, we had a doji at the bottom. This is a hammer. Then we had a bullish engulfing candles, which is what came out of my mouth there. Then our ERI, this is total market cap, which is a great barometer of the overall markets, obviously. So we had so we had the basically the uh, perfect storm here. Doji candle signifies 
indecision, generally at a reversal point. Let me zoom in on this, you guys. That's that red candle here. And then the bullish engulfing candle there. And then we had our ERI. It's almost a perfect scenario. Then our TSI going red to green, crossing 20. You know, nice slope and velocity. Okay. And then the signal crossover and then the key and the bell. And then we had this nice little rally in the total market cap. Pushed up back above a trillion dollars at all important level. So we we're holding there. What is going to be critical is to hold above that as support. So make that a little bit wider. Now, will it or not? This is where we get into some of the nuances. We're in an uptrending channel here. I have this circle as possible buy zone. And uh, this possible candle pattern was borrowed from a prior kind of cycle here. Just kind of see what it might do. I think it was from just right in here, the bars pattern. So this is just a speculation. But so the question is, does it come down and hold here at the trillion dollar level? The markets love to fake people out. I, I think probably if we dropped below that support line, came all the way down to this region in the channel, maybe dip below a trillion momentarily, and then we bounce potentially. But we'll be watching. I'll be watching the indicators and following that along. <clears throat> because on the overall scheme of things, I will just jump back to the monthly candle on Bitcoin. Uh, you know, uh, we have uh, the ERI and TSI which uh, firing, which have only happened at market bottoms. So ERI didn't show up here. The, sorry, the TSI didn't fire. It was too early, needed more data. But uh, here in 2015, 2016, sorry, 2019, and then 2020. We're pushing up and breaking this. That's why I think the bottom is in, you guys. We need to have, I need to have this month confirm above the 20 level, 20 line, but it's looking pretty good because even so, it's looking like a hybrid of 2019 and 2015. 2015, we stumbled a little bit. TSI turned green, had a bit of a pullback here. Now, that was a 40% drop in price on the markets. This is more of a momentum indicator, but once it got above 20 and printed, it was all over. That was the beginning of the next bull market. Here we saw we only had that one print and then it shot way up 2019, huge bounce. You know, that was partially uh, triggered from the March 2020 COVID crash and then quantitative easing. Uh, everyone realized they're going to just have to inject tons of money in the markets and then boom. So I think this was more of an anomaly than than these. Okay, But what I'm looking at here is this and this, very similar, very similar charts. So that's the trend strength indicator. And uh, on the ERI, the early reversal indicator, this green line on a monthly basis, I'll turn it on here. Right. So that's what we're watching for. Now, what else do we want to be watching for? We want to watch for, <clears throat> pardon me, the signal line going green. Look at this massive slope here. Now, I, this uh, is OK. So I'm going to put it on logarithmic. Yeah, these indicators. They're not designed to be logarithmic. I'm not sure that's there, there's that has to do with the algorithm. But uh, so you understand this is these swings are relative to, you know, as things get higher and the swings higher. If we go back before all this, you know, see how that shifted? And then, so don't let that fool you. It's not that it's that much more powerful than the last move, which is the logarithmic redrawing, logarithm redrawing. All right. Uh, so point is, if we estimate looking at May, April, possibly across in April, next month, April, May. So that's when I would anticipate, just like Gretzky says, be where the puck, I knew where the, I played as where the puck would be. So April, May would, would seem to me where things really get heated and going higher again. So that's on the monthly basis. Uh, the indicators are fractal here. We can even jump over to a one hour, four hour and pull up a chart of bitcoin any questions you guys all right i don't see any um let's do this and then we can look at some uh, movers here because we've got about 20 minutes left in the class so um you know i i do i do find these valuable on the shorter time frames this is a four-hour chart of bitcoin i'll turn off the uh, bollinger band 
here we have the vol index. That's why the candles look a little different, right? So when uh, so our four horsemen are the ERI, TSI, signal, and then the trend indicator, the bell, you could almost substitute that on this shorter time frames and sometimes longer with the vol index. Vol index is so powerful when it is coming out of extremes. So let's move back a bit. Again, repetition is the mother of all learning. Right down in here, what am I looking for? These moments when the volatility index coming out of very low volatility, breaking above that 20 line. I do look at the slope, of velocity, indicates velocity, that slope. Whereas this one meandered above, came and then came back down. Whereas back here, uh, you can see you can see these movements. So again, show me the charts. Uh, it's the same thing goes with show me the indicator. You can tell me in the charts. Back in here, overbought, price would have come down. And we saw that slowly drifting down, drifting down, and then saw a bit of a bounce here. Hard to see because we're looking in the past. But when you layer that in with our other indicators, they really do... Um, really are powerful. And the most powerful ones right here is what I was showing you originally. So right here, coming out above the 20 line, now we had already had our ERI, this green line, a TSI green signal, and then the vol index came up above 20. And then boom, we had this explosive move that had this basically carried us all the way up in this whole range. So it's useful to go back and see to continually sharpen the saw and make sure that you're confident in the indicators. So we have these align. This is again, a four hour chart right in this range, pushed higher that 40% move. Had you been watching those? Okay. And so where are we now? And this is interesting. Now, the reason I love this on the vol index is, is it came out of the very low regions and broke above 20. Right now, we're just kind of touching on it and looks to be heading lower. Another bearish sign. Okay. And, um, you know, and we saw this here on the upper extreme as well, where this on the vol index dipped down, pushed up a higher and then dipped down again. So this, we've been drifting down on that. So uh, that's the four hour. Uh, this uh, These generally work well in smaller time frames too. Let's continue on a little bit. I don't really have a planned agenda here. I'm just looking around at some coins to see if we see any nuances with the indicators. So we have Adam bouncing a bit. Now, this is something I'd be watching for is an, an ERI in the bullish side and the TSI going green, but it's kind of starting to turn there, but certainly not enough to be bullish. <clears throat> I like to check the weekly on ABAX and Adam because they kind of move to their own beat. Well, here on this on TSI, also, it's good to draw these trend lines here. You can see some patterns. This was kind of a, a divergence here, a bearish. Actually, it wasn't bearish at all. The prices were going down on Avalanche. So this confirming that this is heading lower. I do think this heads lower. The TSI sloping down. Signal line about to go red again. Our trend indicator midline going uh, red as well. So no surprise. Adam and AVAX. Adam looking slightly less bearish. Uh, the TSI indicates more downside on this. These are just some coins that I watch. And uh, none of this is financial advice, of course. So um, we are waiting for the signals to align. Polygon Matic heading lower. It looks like Eagle heading lower. These The fact that prices are below these moving averages is not uh, inherently good. However, this was still holding on. This is basic attention token. We've got a nice reverse head and shoulders pattern, which held here. And so I'd be waiting and watching for this to hold. It's also in an upper trending channel, you guys. So in this case, I'll set my alert here right above the 21 and 50 day moving average on BAT. See if that breaks. That would indicate it's holding in this upper trending channel. The Inverse head and shoulders may be holding. Ideally, most likely we'd see another ERI and then a TSI turning from red to green. So this has to bake a bit. Let the cake bake, as Joe says. And that's a good example there. Just looking at uh, ADA, uh, not really seeing a whole lot here. Uh, mixed signals have a bullish ERI, but our TSI is not confirming. So I would not be a buyer of ADA based on that here. So we're just kind of waiting. We're waiting for some more downside for these the cycles to reset and turn higher. 
So I don't know that it's important to go through more of these. Let's uh, let's see what might be moving. See if we have any clues on that. So I'll jump over to the crypto pair screener and we can hop out of here. And if you guys have any coins you want to look at, we can do that. And uh, in the meantime, resize this a little bit here. And uh, on our filters, let's see. Change above. Change percentage. Remove the column. I don't need uh, that one. High, low. I don't need the high or the low here. I just want to. See the technical writing. Okay. And then on the exchanges here, I don't want to see all of them. I just, let's just do Binance and uh, KuCoin. That'll tell us pretty much what we want to see. And uh, enough overlap there. So the big movers on the technical rating side, we, if we zoom in, we've got strong buys on a couple of these. We've got NOM. Haven't heard of this. Uh, new coin, all red on the radar. Wouldn't touch this. Uh, you know, generally I will stick with coins that I'm familiar with. And uh, a lot of these doer ones that are moving around are a smaller market cap and moving around because they're being manipulated. When you see these tails like that, stay away from anything that looks like that, by the way, uh, my advice. So let me just skim through here. And um, I mean, the volume on these very low here. I at least want to see a bit more volume to get rid of the uh, smaller coins. Uh, ETC, Ethereum Classic, I don't really follow that. So uh, we have to look at Gala Games. Um, Gala, if we open that up, had a double ERIs there, rolling, or rolling over. Sure enough, it's coming down. TSI confirmed, so Gala Games, that would have been a nice one. If you could find a 3S sh short on that, maybe that's worth watching. Uh, API, uh, we've been watching API a little bit, one of those meme coins. This is the three, uh, the three version on the long side. So that's down. Let's see. We're already in the sell zone. What happened there? Now, sell ratings sometimes are good places to look for cycle resets. So let's see. XRP is being listed as a strong buy. All right, let's take a look at XRP. XRP on the daily, pushing up higher. We watched it the other day on the Bollinger Bands. I was last week telling people sell in this range. It's going to pull back. Sure enough, it did. It found support on this uh, level here. XRP, I'm hearing that they're going to announce they won the lawsuit here at any point. That would cause it to push higher. But we were all green on the radar. That's a go. We had bullish ERIs, three of them in a row, guys. And then a confirm confirming... Let me open that up for you guys. Uh, so again, show me the charts. I'll tell you the news right back in here. It was saying XRP is a buy. This was before it shot up and it shot up quite a bit. So if you're watching and paying attention, that was a nice 35% pop, but this thing's just getting started. It looks like, see that volume coming back in. And the news is that a lot of the XRP whales are layering in on this. Uh, once it clears resistance back in here, I would say, and it's right at that point. Oh, sorry, uh, I had my wrong button pushed. There's a different, there's a different support level right in here. You know, so this range is going to be critical for XRP. It is getting a little bit overbought, but we do have a fresh bell. So I would be, look, follow the signals. A bell is a buy. We had one cycle here that completed. Probably we'll see another cycle on here. Uh, not financial advice, right? But uh, this, the signals are aligning the. I'd like to see a fresh ERI, but we have the ERI here, TSI signal and bell. This would have been the better signal. And so what we want to watch for is, can this break above this? Ideally, we'd see a pullback here to support. But so wait and watch and see if this bell stays. You want to see that confirmed by the end of the day. So that is uh, XRP. And I don't see, oh, wait, wait a minute. My chat was stuck. You guys, I see a few messages here. Uh, let's see. Um, all right. Uh, pirate J let's, uh, pirate chain. Let's look at that tomorrow. Um, uh, crypto mastery class, mostly looking at, um, you know, the movers and shakers. Uh, let's see. Somebody ask what, why are there white candles? Uh, where would, where did you see white candles, Jay? Maybe inside of the trend indicator. If you're talking about these white candles, this is the trend indicator only. 
And that just means there's no trend or it's uh, a bearish day. And so uh, we, well, the reason it's white is just to not pay attention to it. Trend indicators for your bullish signals. You want to see the midline green. You want to see the candles green and the key in a bell. Uh, let's see uh, the, could you explain the CME gap needing to be filled? Uh, we talk about that in our active trader classes tomorrow. That's a bit beyond the scope of today's class. And so uh, this is crypto mastery is really designed for the indicators and um, showing you guys how to use these. Uh, so if you're in our active trader class, um, feel free to ask that tomorrow, Jim. And if not, you can find out more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. Uh, we are doing a, a live presentation this Thursday. Uh, if you'd like information about that, uh, you can ask, uh, send in to support Crypto Mastery. We can give you the link for that. Uh, Myrene, if you're on, by the way, if you could put in a link for this Thursday's uh, webinar to learn more about all that, we can do it that way. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, Pirate J, ARP, that, that's, uh, I can't answer that question. That's an active trader class question, and I can't give you financial advice on when to take profits. So uh, ask me tomorrow. Um, let's see, XRP, uh, we just covered that. Uh, Dero, we can look at. And then FTM, all right, you got it. Yeah, so so for Thursday, this week's in the chat, you see it's moonstream.io slash free training. Uh, Jim, you may want to join us for that. Uh, so again, the crypto mastery classes, these are primarily for our active trader students, but also people in crypto mastery wanting to learn how to really follow the indicators. So uh, we follow that uh, format here. And so just to skim down though, before we dive into those, I'm going to click on the technical rating to sort this to sell, to see if anything is maybe uh, coming down to a bottoming area. So here's near. The reason it's good to also watch the sell recommendations is that these are typically down in the lower range of their cycle reset. So what you might want to do is even set an alert on these on this uh, from the uh, TSI when uh, so crossing up above 20 is how I do that. And that would give me that signal that near is coming back up and likely is in an uptrend and confirming an ERI. So that's why it's good to watch these on the uh, sell side, uh, let's see, TWT, I'm not familiar with, but it's been a long downtrending, uh, you know, bleed out. So not terribly exciting there. Let's see, Uniswap, haven't looked at Uniswap in a while. Could be getting ready for a pump here. You know, the base hits are the name of the game. So back in here, ERI caught the TSI 25% between ERI signals alone. That would have been great. Uniswap, if um, if we get a bullish ERI and then TSI again comes up out of this. So if you wanted to set that alert, right click, add alert. And sometimes you can just do it that way. I prefer the crossing up over 20. So when this turns green and turns back up above 20, then you'll get an alert on that. So, okay, well, then uh, why don't we do this We're kind of coming up on the hour? If you guys wanted to look at a few other coins, we'll look at Dero and Phantom Coin, then we'll call it a day. Sound good? Uh, let's see, why am I in stocks? D E R O. So it's on KuCoin and CoinX. We'll pull it up. Uh, so let's see, what do we see here on Dero? It's already had its move. I wouldn't be chasing this. Where should you have bought Dero back here? In hindsight, ERI, early reversal indicator, hence the name TSI green on the same day, broke above 20 the next day along with the uh, signal line going green and the key and then the bell. So let's unpack this as, a, as, as an ideal way to trade this. Had you been watching this, I'll turn off the radar for a minute so we can see. So if you had had this on your radar, ERI right there, also a bullish engulfing candle, those of you, you get this as a bonus with Crypto Mastery. So um, why isn't that? I'd have to zoom in on this. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes it looks like it's bullish engulfing and it isn't. See that? It wasn't it, it wasn't engulfing. That's why it's good if you're new to all this. I looked at it on when it wasn't zoomed in. I'm like, why isn't it showing bullish engulfing? Because it looks like it. And the indicators clearly um working seeing back here but when you zoom when i zoomed in on it 
it's not engulfing at all, is it? It's close, but the real body would have had to engulf this. So it's it's good to check that. It's a good spot check. Okay, so anyway, uh, let me turn off the candlestick scanner. Again, that's a, you guys have that included in the Crypto Mastery Indicator Suite. So again, it, watching the ERI, boom, bullish engulfing almost, but really the ERI is the signal. And then we had what? We had the TSI going green same day. The next day shot up a bit. And I was kind of looking for a rocket sin signal there, which we uh, is a, one of our active trader homegrown indicators. But so ERI, TSI, signal going green, and then the bell the following day. So the safe way to play this, pay attention on the ERI, looks interesting. Then the TSI confirms. I probably would have started entering the trade here. And uh, because the signal line was also green. And then the following day, we had a bell. That would have been a pullback to support on the 21-day moving average. So these three candles would have been your buy signals and there, shot way up. Okay, and of course, had a profit-taking moment there, followed by a reset, a key, and a bell. And uh, so in terms of this, if you're still in this, it looks like it could have two more days of upside. I'd be a little concerned it's, it's topping out, but it's still pushing higher. So today is 28th. I say on the 30th would be a good profit-taking day. Um, but you, this is, this dollar sign is a sign to take partial profits. Always pay yourself. So if you're in this trade, I would take half profits here, just in general. I can't give you the individual financial advice, just need to stress that. But in terms of what the indicators that we are at resistance. So I use old school technical analysis along with these indicators. So we're at resistance, be a good time to take some profits off the table Maybe it pulls back tomorrow, right? And then the next day you'd have your profit-taking day. And maybe that pushes and breaks out a bit. Uh, always good to hold a bit of a moon bag in case it really runs on a tear. Uh, as at this particular moment, I wouldn't be buying it based on these signals. Uh, and because it's, um, you know, it's it looks like it's hitting resistance. If it were to break out, you know, when you see all this white space above this 21 day moving average, it's kind of like showing it's topping out. And you can put a nine day on it for just sort of a this is an EMA, by the way. So the old the old standards were 10, 20, 50. So somewhere along the lines, we started getting a little creative and trying to get in front of the, the next, you know, so instead of 10, it became nine instead of um, 20, it became 21. That went the other way for some reason. Uh, let's see, wait, this is already set to nine. I must have it as a default. Yeah, uh, so I'll just make that a little bit wider. And there. Okay, so so that can give you a little bit earlier barometer, but it's, it's um, where I was going with that is these things, if it's gonna break out, typically they'll come back and retest. So now is not the risk reduced time to buy. This would be take partial profits point because if it pulls back to support, then you can buy back at a lower price for the breakout. And if it does break out here, usually it pulls back to current price. So you could buy it here. So you wouldn't be have lost any money. Okay. So hopefully that helps. And see, so why do I have all my scaling to the right? So let me do this merge all scales on the right hand side. Gotcha. All right, uh, hopefully that helps. And let's see what else we want to look at. Phantom coin. Let me get back my, to my pointer here. But that's how I would play uh, Dero. And uh, so uh, J, uh, JJJ says, if Bitcoin dumps, won't the alts dump regardless of charts? Yeah, that, that's also, also true. You know, there's always that outlier that could pump like XRP, but I think um, profit taking is is likely to ensue here, and Bitcoin's rolling over. So that's why I said a day or two more I would be taking profits. But today would be a good profit taking day. Here's why too, and you may not have heard me talk about this, you guys. Do you see any patterns here? Once you start doing this long enough, you start to just see them. Where whereas you once I tell you, you can't unsee it. So over in here, consolidation. 
down day update, down day update. This is sort of indicating a decision. And if I zoom out on this to say a five day, this all shows as one or two candles in here. Like this is this candle. Interesting that it interesting that it showed an ERI on that. This this five this five days of indecision in this chop was a bullish ERI on the five day, but that's not what I wanted to show you. So what can you see here? Pretty simple pattern. We have three days up, one day red. Three green, one red. Three green, one red. Three green. So what should tomorrow be? Tomorrow be profit taking day. Red. Three and one. Three and one. Three and one. Probably bearish. And so honestly, you know, it's it's so so in terms of lagging out, I I don't recommend going all in and all out. Some people do that. Like that's a sign of an amateur trader. And what happens is you miss the breakouts and you wind up taking losses. So if you're an all in and all out type of trader, you might be coming in saying, okay, I'm all in. And then it pulls back and you're like, shit, I'm going to sell here. I'm all out. And then it, and it runs against you. Have you ever had that happen? Yeah. So taking partial profits here, taking profits because markets cycle. The FOMO, I know you think it's going to go straight up, go to the moon, but look for these patterns. Three up, one down. Three up, down. Three up, likely we pull back here tomorrow. Uh, not 100%. So what should you do here? Uh, what could you do here? You could sell half. Again, from that example I showed a minute ago, if tomorrow is a sell-off day, take profits day, then you can buy back cheaper. You know. Uh, and and maybe watch your signals on a four, one and four hour chart before you buy back in. And I use them on, you know, look guys, these these indicators are fractal. I use them for day trading on one minutes. Uh, sorry, one minutes. Let me turn this off before I start talking. 30 seconds even. I've got a 30 second chart. Something's glitched out here and I need the arrow. Sometimes, uh, so I have... What is this? Why is that showing a daily? I got uh, buggered there. Uh, my chart. So 30 seconds. Let's try that again. Sometimes I use this for exact timing on a day trade. Usually it's just the one minute, three minute, 15 minute, and the one hour. Bollinger Bands on there as well. But look at what I'm mostly watching is this TSI cycling. I'm not going to get into day trading here, but, uh, you know, very useful. For some reason I have the TSI on here twice. Not sure why. Okay. But um, by the way, this one hour chart bearish. This looks very bearish to me right now. So here's why. Um just, just looking at this. Well, I mean, overall we have this big topping pattern here, but but that's not what I was looking at. Uh, I was looking at. The um, when when price goes sideways, 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 and then fails at the twenty-one period moving average, I'm gonna zoom in on this really closely. See what's happening here? It's a big drop, consolidation, sideways, topping tails, but we're seeing lower highs, lower highs, lower highs, but right in here, rejecting at the twenty-one period again. And again and again. And what is we're about this about to drop. Probably see a precipitous drop here on the one hour. Kind of like in this range, you know, the, the resistance was the 50 period moving average, that green line. And um and, and the TSI going red. Let's just see ERI, you know, ERI's is it's just I know that I know this pattern nothing bullish about this and uh it's starting to break down below so as this as this heads down so this is this is looking bearish to me so you know and our, our radar look our radar all red and often when it goes all red boom that you see the price move and almost as soon as that happens so i don't want to spend too much time we're over time on this so uh let's see so we had Dero, and then let's take a look at phantom coin and then uh, we'll wrap things up for today so 
Uh, I know I have it in here, guys, but let me just do this and Phantom Coin. Since you guys asked, and let's see, Phantom Coin on, we'll do this. Uh, maybe I'll pull up the 3S. So Phantom Coin uh, has had a bit of a drop here. Right, so zoom back out a bit. When in doubt, zoom out. And let's see, this was an old Fibonacci I can turn off. So basically, nothing really significant here. We don't, let me let me back that out. Uh, we don't have a bearish ERI for some reason, but it does look bearish to me. Okay, so we had the... Uh, we had the TSI go green, so it has been coming down. We have been watching Phantom Coin and Active Trader, as you know, and I'm currently in a 3S short on this, which uh, it's finding some support at this level a little bit. You can zoom out and just see, all right, so there was resistance, 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 flipped as support back here. Let me just adjust it a bit. And then extending it out, holding the shift button, you know, so we're finding a little bit of support here, but I don't think it's strong enough to hold it. Uh, we're looking at bearish TSI. Does it have further downside? Looks like it has further downside. Once they drop like this, they don't generally turn around right here. They generally complete the cycle in the green area. There's another nuance for you. Not saying it can't happen, but most often it does, especially when it drops with that much vertical drop in velocity think of it as a stone falling off a cliff is it falling off the cliff and free falling or is it sort of tumbling a bit you know maybe it's not the best analogy but um hopefully you get the point this has more downside signal line is also red recently changed i think this thing's coming down so phantom could hold a bit today and uh trend certainly not uh, looking great so does it hold here temporarily it could let me turn off that other era ema all of this alphabet soup, it does get confusing. EMIs, EMAs, ERIs, TSIs, TSA, that's airport security. Jeez, you know, this world we live in. Uh, anyway, um, anything else, Sam? I'm not sure what else to show you on that. And that's about all I have time for. Uh, Alex says, I can attest to all to the all in and out. It's not a good technique at all. Yeah. Uh, Alex is right, because what you'll do is you'll sell out of your winners. There's an old saying, let your profits run. And too often people take profits too early and let take losses too late. So one way to combat that is leg in and leg out. What it also helps you do is reset your mind, because what happens is you're in fear and fear prevents you from making the right decision. Because maybe you bought up in this area you know, maybe you saw this bullish engulfing candle there and you're like, okay, I'm going to go in. And then it turned against you. And instead of taking a loss, you're like, well, uh, I don't know. This is when your brain plays tricks on you. And you're like, well, clearly I made the right decision here and, and it should bounce. It's a 20. And you think of all these reasons because humans are wired for consistency of commitment and, um, and, um, What's the other phrase that I always use, you guys? Uh, kind of reinforcing our prior belief. There's a, another term for it. But at any rate, uh, instead of what you can do here and should do here is take a small partial loss, maybe sell 25% of the trade. And then it went down, it goes down a little more, maybe sell 25% more. So it doesn't sting as bad, you know. And, and then when you wind it down here, you're glad that you took some smaller losses there. So, and then on the profit side, as I explained, you know, you can, when you hit a support and re, a resistance level, taking some profit, let me see if I can find a good example here. Uh, I mean, it's not the ideal example, but right, right here, you know, let's say you had bought down here at the ERI and it pushes up to that line right there. And you're like, should I sell or should I hold? Well, if you sold half, took some profits, and then it pushed higher the next day, you might say, well, wow, I should have held on, but don't do that because what happened? It pulled back to retest, you see? And then from there, it drift, drifted down. So that's where you know you would have had more profit by holding on to half of it and then selling, selling some more here. You know, Keeping a moon bag if you're overall bullish, 
you know, and we have our modified Bollinger Band, which in that case didn't tell us much. So overall, guys, where do I, th I think this looks bearish. I mean, I don't think this holds for very long. We're in this sort of macro topping kind of pattern on Phantom Coin. It had a huge run up here. We love Phantom Coin. Don't get me wrong. You know we do. We It was our January 2021 pickup. Went up 18,000%. We re-recommended it in November of 2022 back in here. Do you guys remember that? Go back and if you're in Moonstream, go back our November pick. Now it dropped like a stone, right? From November. Uh, and but but that's where Phantom's one of those ones you just hold. This was the FTX debacle. And then, but where did it go from from since January of 2023 this year again? So you want to here's the point of this: you want to time it right on Phantom Coin. It went up 200 percent up until this uh, bearish ERI. So what do you want to do? You want to wait for the next ERI TSI swing. So do you want it to come down here? Sure, I do. Hit this next one just right. We've got a new programmer working on the ERI. We're going to tweak some things. But look, just on that point, before we go, just this is perfect. And uh, so back in here, sold off ERI right here. Would you buy it? No. Why? TSI red and not not confirming. All right. And I do I love it when we see two or three ERIs in a row, especially when the second one is lower and then it confirms with the TSI. This was the buy point. You see how powerful this is. Guys, I don't know if you know what you have in your hands. This is almost a bullish engulfing. We looked at this before, but it, it's it's close enough with an ERI and then the signal TSI green confirming here, then the signal, then the bell, you know, bell would have gotten a send here, a little bit of a pullback might have been stopped out. Hey, but this ERI was not a sell signal because the TSI was still green and going higher. You know, but this is where you blend old school TA. So even without this arc here, you want to be drawing these trend line resistance areas. So in hindsight, everything's 2020. I get it. But you have the ability to see these are predictive indicators. The next ERI with a confirming TSI, signal green, and a bell. I, I'll be covering my short and flipping to long. So, all right, guys, that's all we have time for. I see some more questions came in, and uh, yeah, Alex has had it happen recently. No more. It takes time, Alex. The, the, your, our brains are hardwired uh, for protecting ourselves and for you know greed and FOMO, and, and it takes time to unlearn this. Uh, Dero was a real confusing trade. Um, well, I, I mean, look in hindsight, you know, it was clear with the indicators, and uh, KS saying in near term most. If not all, all alts will be depressed until the U.S. global banking system tremors shake out. Yeah, I mean, the alts are the most risky. And, um, you know, there's, you know, back to the beginning of the class, there's the war on crypto. We got CFTC coming in, you know, I, the, the SEC, if the SEC loses, if, if XRP wins a notable victory, we'll see a, a huge short-term pump rally, but the war is not over. Just keep that in mind uh, and can last a while, as we've seen in Russia, Ukraine. Predominant narrative in the crypto circles tends toward preservation of principle. Yep, I say it all the time. Preservation of capital is paramount. And uh, let's see, predominant narrative in crypto circles tends toward preservation principle i mean now it does it's in, in rather than gains it's totally opposite though chaos in the bull market right so it depends where the fear and greed index is uh he says that said there's always volatility that can be traded to the upside or downside exactly for the folks that have the skill and are willing to put in time and effort to manage those trades and put aside emotion true and i uh, will would add to that uh, use the indicators, really learn the nuances. I spent a lot of time looking at these, but how clean are these? I, I, I had seen these and Joe's indicators years before I worked with him. And I said to myself, I would love to work with that guy because I've been trading 23, 25 years. And just, you know, the, the Mac D's and RSI's and all, they have their place, but they're lagging indicators. They're not, they're not, they don't compare to what we have here. 
you know, there are some nuances with divergences you can see in RSIs and they have their, their help. But I mean, you know, a lot of that's priced in. We see that, you know, the ERI is just following the footsteps of the elephants and they're looking at all, all the other stuff. Uh, and, and, but, you know, look, today's, today's trading is algo driven. So we need an edge. Um, what uh, I wanted to add to that here just briefly, um, well, I, I'll leave it alone. You know, I was going to pull up that 3S short. It's kind of on KS's comment. You know, if you're not an active trader and uh, want to find more opportunities for trading the downsides, we don't really teach shorting. But um, right now we're, you know, we're watching and I'm currently trading a the downside with an inverse here, which um, is interesting that uh, at least these indicators are not designed for derivative products, but look at that nice TSI swing up on the 3S shorts. And the last time it happened was back in here. And I'm gonna zoom in on this a bit. I'm not gonna tell you, you can't see my TP profit zones though, cause that's for active trader class. Back in here, I think this thing has more legs in it. Those of you following my 3S short and Phantom coin, so I think Phantom has more to drop and uh, more gains on the upside. And uh, if it hits TP5, that's a 500% gain. So that's all we have time for, guys. Uh, want to keep an eye on our XRP there and see what uh, shakes out. And but hopefully that was helpful. And I uh, will get this up on the YouTube channel here later on today. So thanks everybody. Uh, Got to run, but. Um, have a great week. And uh, if you want to join us for this week's training, it is at moonstream.io slash free training. Mike and I will be doing that and uh, covering some market, uh, you know, updates, things like that. And we uh, will be reopening M3. And I have, wait, before you go, I have a surprise that those of you that uh, join will get. And I alluded to it earlier and I forgot to show it to you. So the question is, uh right yeah here it is so we're building we're going to give away a trader success checklist if you're an active trader you will get this of course you've seen a different version of it uh this uh, my other designers are working on this but these are the rules i use when trading so if you have an eri and a showing up green arrow that's great yes tsi we talked covered that a lot today turning up and green above the 20 line and then as the signal line gone red to green those three things are my three primary so we've gamified this a little bit all right so down below all right so this one version hasn't been coded yet so basically it'll say hey you've got a 30 percent you've got three check marks on the uh the rating scale so we're going to give you guys this give away this trader success checklist so and you have other things in here advanced setups we have um you know, RSIs is price above the 2150. All of my trading methodologies so give this away. We have bullish engulfing candles. So the more check marks you have on there, the more confidence you have in the trade. So join us Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern, moonstream.io slash free training. And uh, I'll even click on the link so you guys can see what that looks like. For your 2023 personal crypto bailout and rescue recovery plan, those of you who are in M3 uh, don't need to join uh, that because that is what it's about. But, um, you know, always good to, to have you guys on and we're going to be sharing some timely market uh, updates. So feel free to join us for that. We'd love to have you there. All right. We'll talk to you guys soon. And if you're watching this recording, you can always learn more about that at moonstream.io slash M3. All right. Take care, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. If you're an M3, we'll cover and unpack a lot more of this and uh, also the uh, some other opportunities and things like the AI coins that we're watching. All right, guys. Thanks so much. See you next week.